You're listening to the Crew Book Club podcast, the show that challenged you to change your mindset through hearing about dope books. Thanks for hanging with the crew to get advice, ask questions, and gain knowledge with me, your host, Sade Hill. What up, crew? What's good? It's your girl, Sade, checking in another episode of the Crew Book Club podcast. As always, I'm excited to be here. First, before we get into the episode, I want to acknowledge a partnership that we have here with BetterHelp. It's a special offer for the Crew Book Club podcast. You get 10% off your first month of professional therapy. I recommend this to everyone I know. As soon as I hear somebody, oh, I'm thinking about doing therapy. I'm like, here you go. Not because I'm partnering with them, but because I actually use them. And then last week, I had a close person of mine was just like, oh my gosh, I'm having such a hard time getting to therapy. I've constantly had to reschedule and cancel because work is taking over and I can't get to the side of town that my therapist is on. And I was like, girl, why are you doing all of that? Betterhelp.com slash crew love. Like literally you could schedule it on your lunch break. Don't even have to leave your job. Sit at your, well, I don't recommend your desk somewhere private like in your car you can be eating your lunch talking to your therapist you know that's the convenience of better help and that's one of the things i loved super convenient so check out better help.com slash crew love to get your um 10 percent off your first month of therapy they do take the hs hsa card as well so you don't have to pay out of pocket necessarily and also they do have financial aid okay so definitely check that out now let's go ahead and get into who gonna check me boo god is he is always checking us and we deserve a good check you hear me this particular check comes from psalms 25 5 it says guide me in your truth and teach me for you are my savior and my hope is in you all day long okay you know any and everything we do in life comes from a place of service you know anything that is successful it typically serves people in some form or fashion from products to relationships is coming from a place you should be coming from a place of service. You know, as a realtor and a podcaster, often people's concerns with getting into the business always seems to be like this worry of, will I give people the right information? What if I get it wrong and mess up in selling a house incorrectly or putting a buyer in a horrible situation? You know, you know, I was one of those people. I would talk myself out of doing something because I was so worried and concerned of how if I was knowledgeable enough to handle um, people in that facet of service. And so when I read this passage out of um, Prayers and Promise of a Woman on page 65 about guidance, it just really um, touched me and I hope it touches you the same way to give you that confirmation. It says, God, how wonderful is it to follow you? I don't know. I don't have to know where I'm going or worry about leading anyone on the wrong path. There is such freedom in knowing that you know exactly where I need to go and you will do everything necessary to get me there. Help me follow you willingly so that anyone looking to me for direction will not miss you either. And I was just like, yes. That's what I leaned into as a woman of God and what I'm encouraging you to lean into. Leaning into God, you know, no matter what direction you're going, he's going to lead you to be able to lead his children first. Okay, so don't be going around worry and concern whether you're leading one in the wrong path. Remember who your leader is and he will definitely guide you. And that's where Psalms 25, 5 comes in. Guide me in your truth and teach me for you are God, my savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Okay. So I hope that encourage you to go out and do what you need to do, trusting that God will lead you to do the right thing by his children okay so that was who gonna check me boo god is he is always 
checking us. And y'all, we can only get checked as if we are in his presence, okay? Now, if you're new to the pod and you want to show some crew love, leave me the podcast five star reviews, share the episode and follow us on social media anywhere at the crew book club. Now, listen, y'all can literally Google us, the crew book club. You can literally type it in and you will see our YouTube, our Instagram. We're on TikTok as well. We're on fan base. So yes, follow all and subscribe. Okay. You can also visit our website, thecrewbookclub.com. Simple, easy to find. Okay. So show me some crew love. All right. So we're going to get into chapter 15, live for productivity and chapter 16, the three commitments in the one thing. Yes. The surprisingly simple truth behind extraordinary results by Gary Keller and Jay Pappinson. Hope I'm saying that right. Don't Okay, <laughs> I always say that. All right, so chapter 15, live for productivity. Yes, okay, on page 156, the opening quote is literally, productivity isn't about being a workhorse, keeping busy, or burning the midnight oil. It's more about priorities, planning, and fiercely protecting your time. Reclaim your time, <laughs> okay? All right, so that was Margaret. Margarita Tarkowski, please excuse me if I'm saying it wrong, but yes, she definitely had that dope quote and it aligns with everything that I stand for, priority, planning, and protecting my darn time, okay? All right, on page 158, it hops into it as well. It says, the most successful people are the most productive people. Productive people get more done, achieve better results, and earn far more in their hours than the rest. They do so because they devote maximum time to being productive on their top priority, their one thing. They time block. Okay, time blocking is my best friend. They've connected the dots between working their time bo- blocks consistently and the extraordinary results they seek. Another quote that they have on this page is by Francine J. It says, my goal is no longer to get more done, but rather to have less to do. It is okay if you finish your day at two o'clock, if you have been productive with the one thing and the priority that's going to get you extraordinary results. A lot of times we're doing a whole bunch of things that really don't equate. And then by the end of the day, you're going to sleep concerned. Did I do the things I was supposed to do or not feeling like you had a successful day because you ran around doing the could do things instead of the should do things. Okay. So let's, let's deep dive more into this. Okay. On page 159, it talks about time blocking and boundaries. And you know, y'all, those are my biggest friends of getting things done. Time blocking and the boundaries for people to respect those time blocks. Okay. It says here, time blocking on page 159, time blocking is a very results oriented way of viewing and using time. It's a way of making sure that what has to be done gets done. Time blocking harness your energy and centers it on your most important work. It's productivity's greatest power tool. The drill. I was trying to do a drill sound. (laughs) See, this is when I can't wait to have like an engineer to put little sounds in there. I think that would be kind of cool. But yeah, because my power tool sound was not here. No, that didn't work. (laughs) Anyway, the thing is though, unfortunately, if you're like most individuals, our typical day might look something like this figure, 27. And for my listeners, it's a circle and it's like 25, not even 25%. That look like what? 15%. Of the time people typically spend on their one thing and then they do everything else instead of spending more time on their one thing than everything else. So a productive day will be spending at least 50% of your time doing your one thing. Okay. And then the everything else. When I was hosting the event, um, with the Jacksonville woman owner suite on the, on February 18th, we did a 
exercise where I had the ladies write down their to-do list. And a lot of people had things for themselves. And then we had a few people who had things like laundry. And I'm like, that's the least of what you should be concerned about. Yes, laundry is important. You need clothes to wear. At the same time, if that's your number one priority today is to get laundry done, we need to reevaluate your your list of things that are taking priority of your life. And then you're wondering why six weeks later you haven't accomplished anything towards your goal because laundry is the first thing on your to-do list. No, your first things needs to be the thing that's going to get you to extraordinary results. And you need to at least spend four hours a day on that to compound to get those extraordinary results in the future. Okay, it says when you find yourself with less and less time to focus on what matters most, the most productive people day is dramatically different than everybody else. Because if the disappointment result this appropriate results come from one activity then you must give the one activity the disproportionate time each and every day ask the focus and question for your block time today what's the one thing I can do for my one thing such that by doing it everything else will be easier or unnecessary okay and the thing about laundry for me y'all I outsource that bad boy Because I know that's one thing that I cannot stand to do. I'm the person who will put all the clothes in the laundry. They will be washed and maybe dried. Maybe. Because sometimes it's been days where I put something in the the washer. And I'm going to set up for like two or three days. And I got to go back and rewash. So yeah, for me, I just choose to leverage that and outsource it. And I found someone who did mine like 99 cents a pound. Okay. So my time blocking with laundry is to take that bad boy, drop it off and come back and pick it up, put it away for 15 minutes. It takes me 15 minutes to put it away when I outsource. So if you know that's going to be an issue, try to find ways to outsource things so you can focus on the things that will exceed um, your, um, your extraordinary results. Okay. And listen to this. There's three things you need to know about time blocking which they discuss on page 164. Time block your time off, time block your one thing, and time block your planning time, okay? Let's talk about time block your time off. It says on page 164, by planning your time off in advance, you are in effect managing your work time around your downtime instead of the other way around. You're always letting everyone else know well in advance when you'll be out so they can plan accordingly. When you intend to be successful, you start protecting time to recharge and reward yourself. Resting is as important as working. Okay, to be selfish with our time to recharge so we can pour into others is so important. We cannot pour from an empty cup. And I know you heard that before. And I put it in the context when I was speaking on the 18th to these group of women. Be careful of the people who call you selfish because you have to think. Are they calling you selfish because you're not doing what they want you to do when they want you to do it and how they want it to be done? Okay, so that's a boundary that has to be set. Also on page 165, it says after you've time blocked your time off, time block your one thing. Okay, time block your one thing. Yes, you read that right. You must. Your most important work comes second. Why? Because you can't happily sustain success in your professional life if you neglect your personal, quote unquote, recreate recreation time. Okay. The most productive people design their days around doing their one thing. Their most important appointment each day is with themselves and they never miss it. Okay. I never I wake up early every day before everyone in my house to give myself time to me. I am my most important person in my life. I mean, of course, God first. But I'm saying like physically here on earth, my time is my most important time, my me time. And my me time involves being in relationship with Christ. And let me tell you another thing, a statistic that I wrote, the highly successful people typically is serving a higher power. My higher power is Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> God and the Holy Spirit, okay? It's the Trinity. Let's be very clear, okay? And we never miss a morning together, okay? It says here on page 165 as well, the most productive people work on one, e one event time. They don't quit until their one thing is done. The key to making this work is to block time as early in your day as possible. Give yourself 30 minutes to an hour to take care of morning priorities, then move to your one thing. My recommendation is to block four hours a day. And I had told you guys that. This isn't a typo. I repeat, four hours a day. Honestly, that's the minimum. You can do more than do more. Now listen, those four hours, my some gets kind of interrupted because I'll wake up to have self-care time. It's me, Christ, uh, me journaling, me reading my 10 pages a day of a book. And then it's blocked off and I take care of my daughter, drop her off, and then I'm to the gym. Okay. And then after that, I'm coming home and I'm working on my one thing. And typically I always have at least one thing I need to get done for the crew book club and then some priority for the for my real estate business. And if those things aren't done, my day is not over, okay? Even if they're small interruptions, okay? So those are the things you need to think about when time blocking your time off, your one thing, and planning your time. On page 170, it says, the world doesn't know your purpose or priorities and isn't responsible for them. You are. So it's your job to protect your time blocks from all those who don't know what matters most to you and from yourself when you forget. Woo. Y'all have to understand this statement. If you scheduled yourself to go to the gym at 10 a.m. and it's on your calendar and someone calls you and it could I and some people may fight me on this and you might disagree. But if someone calls me for real estate example and they're a buyer or a seller and they're like, listen, I can only meet at this time and this day. Okay, cool. You might reschedule if they say that. But before you even agree to it, don't hesitate to say, I already have an appointment scheduled for that time. Is it possible that we can do 12 o'clock on this day? Okay? Because think about it. What if that they don't know that your gym appointment is not with whomever? But it should be just, yourself should be just as important as everybody else's time, okay? They don't have to know your business. You don't have to disclose that. What you can say is, hey, I had that booked already with another appointment. Could we do this date? And if that person says no, if it's up to you, me, I'd be like, okay, well, what day works for you? And what is the issue? Is it really urgent? Because if it's not that urgent, it could wait. And trust me, the people who want to work with you will wait for you. A lot of times when I realize when it's a buyer that's calling me, that's frantic and they need to be here and they're like, and they haven't done the proper steps. It's like, you're not even pre-approved. So why would I rework my whole entire schedule to take you to see a house if you haven't turned in all of your documents or done the proper steps? So... It's like, okay, why is it so important to me this day? What is it that we need to discuss? Because it possibly could just be an email. <laughs> Seriously, y'all ever be on your meetings or have a Zoom? And it's like, okay, this could have been an email. Right. So before you change your time block for your appointment for self, don't hesitate to ask people to work around your schedule, okay? So yeah, because like this statement says, the world doesn't know your purpose or priorities and they aren't responsible for it. And then you say you reschedule, then you meet with the person like, oh, that was it. And then you're going to sleep realizing like you didn't meet the priority for yourself. And then now you mad at everybody else because you didn't fulfill your cup. I'm just saying, okay? So it also for yourself, make the commitment to you. Not just anybody else, but stick to the commitments that you make for yourself. All right, chapter 16, the three commitments. First, you must adapt your mindset of someone seeking mastery. Page 178. This is chapter 16. Okay. 
As you progress along the path of mastery, both your self-confidence and your success competence will grow. Mastery is a pursuit that keeps giving because it's a path that never ends. You guys, there is no end to this. (laughs) <laughs> whatever you doing until you die you're going to be constantly mastering so get used to it okay that's that it is what it is now the second thing the th- second commitment is you most commonly seek the very best ways of doing things go from entrepreneurial to purpose and the book is called move from e to p it says the path of mastering something is a combination of not only doing the best you can do it at but it's also doing it the best it can be done oh big thing being effective and efficient listen to this entrepreneurial e or purposeful p Entrepreneurial is our natural approach. It's seeking something we want to do or that needs to be done and racing off to do it with enthusiasm, energy, and natural ability. Okay? Now, listen to this. When it comes to bringing P to the same ceiling looks a little different. The purposeful approach says... I'm still committed to growing, so what are my options? You then use the focusing question to narrow those choices down to the next thing you should do. It could be uh, follow a new model, get a new system, or both. But be prepared, implementing these may require new thinking, new skills, and even new relationships. That's when you're taking it from entrepreneur your natural abilities to be more purposeful with your approach being purposeful is often about doing what comes unnaturally but when you're committed to achieving extraordinary results you simply do whatever it takes anyway okay when you've done the best you can do but at a certain results aren't the best they can get out of e and into P. Look for better models and systems. Because we can start off with the entrepreneurial hype, our natural abilities to do these things, but how do I take that thing to the purposeful thing and grow? And so for me, I'm at this space where it's like, how can I scale from just podcasting to being in the space with the people and then growing and elevating. That's why we have the mastermind coming up in April, which you can purchase t- tickets to that, where we take what we learn from these books and apply it to our life and being in an atmosphere where we can elevate ourselves, challenge ourselves and grow. And I will do just that. Ask the people who went to the mastermind before you already know. And the women who attended the event, I'm going to put you on blast. To get you to the next level in a good way, in a good loving way to make you see the perspective of how we can break things down to accomplish our extraordinary results that is needed. Okay, the third thing of being committed, you must be willing to be held accountable for doing everything you can do to achieve your one thing. Okay, on page 184, it talks about that. Accountable people, uh, accountable people achieve results others only dream of. When life happens, you can be either the author of your life or the victim of it. Those are the only two choices, accountable or unaccountable. This may sound harsh, but it's true. Every day we choose one approach or the other and the consequences follow us forever. It says taking complete ownership of your outcomes by holding no one but yourself responsible for them is the most powerful thing you can do to drive your success. Do you hear me? You have to be accountable for yourself. Okay. The moment that you're not, you're choosing to not be accountable and you're going to be stuck in the rut that you are in and that you're not satisfied in. So if anybody is going to be accountable, it needs to be to yourself. Okay. All right. So, and also having an accountability partner is major important because 
this statement right here on page 187. It says, one of the most fastest ways to bring accountability to your life is to find an accountability partner. Accountability can come from a mentor, a peer, or a highest form as a coach. Whatever the case, it's critical that you acquire an accountability relationship and give your partner license to lay out the honest truth. An accountability partner, y'all, isn't a cheerleader. Although they can lift you up, an accountability partner provides frank, objective feedback on your performance, creates an ongoing expectation of productive progress, and can provide critical brainstorming or even expertise when needed. Listen, it's cool if your friend is your accountability partner. But if you feel some type of way when your friend check you, that's not the best accountability partner. Or if you're timid and you don't want to say something because it might make your friend mad at you because you they don't want it, they don't need to be it doesn't need to be heard by you, then you need to switch up your accountability partner. Okay? You need someone that's gonna challenge you, tell you the honest truth, and that's gonna al- allow you to hear. You have to allow them to be able to give feedback without you being offended, okay? On page 187, it also mentions Dr. Gail Matthews researched individuals with written goals were 42.1% more likely to succeed, but there's more to the story. Individuals who wrote their goals and sent progress reports to friends were 77.6% more likely to achieve them. Listen, y'all, there's so much power in having an accountability partner. I have a few accountability meetings. One particular one was is with real estate, and we meet every Monday. And I remember there was a point where we were struggling to just being in this one particular price point. And now we're all selling uh, over, um, we're in that half a million dollar price point one of them have like completely taken off but you talk about realtors in florida who started off with like two hundred thousand dollar homes you know what i'm saying so to see all of us grow in this space to give each other feedback and to be accountable first to ourselves and to hold our other partners accountable it's just phenomenal watching these things grow and one of my accountability partners was like I remember when I met you and you were just talking about having a podcast and talking about having a book club and to see where you are at now is just amazing to see and it's awesome to share the struggles and get the feedback from them and the honest truth and it's just an amazing thing and to know that you're 77.6% more likely to achieve your goals just by having accountability partner, why not? Okay. And that's one of the things in the masterminds coming in April that I'm going to make y'all partner because I see the power in it and I've experienced the power. And I told you guys, I don't tell you to, to do something that I haven't done. Okay. So that was chapters 15 and 16, Live for Productivity and the Three Commitments that you need to do to get to the extraordinary result, results, okay? And if you come into the mastermind, I have activities out of this book that we're going to do to challenge ourselves to get to our extraordinary results, all right? Okay, so we have a few more minutes left in the episode I want to hop in and give you the challenge of the week and if you're not but let's let's say this let's be proactive yes if you're coming to the mastermind it would be great if you already have a calibrability partner and you guys come together to get more skill set to add to your group right now if you don't want to do that do that now that's your challenge this week to find a partner to be accountability to be accountable to okay pick a day where you guys meet it could be a coach it could be a mentor it can be a friend just set the expectations to say hey i need honest truth make an agreement and a commitment to each other to be honest give honest feedback and have good intentions with your accountability partner okay and this is an opportunity to keep it real with yourself don't sell yourself short when finding and partnering with the accountability partner aren't you tired of being where you're at 
right? So partner up with somebody who's sick and tired of being sick and tired too. So y'all can motivate and help each other be consistent and be accountable to your goals, okay? All right, so that's your challenge of the week. Find an accountability partner and to sign up to come to the mastermind to get more skills and accountability from me (laughs) to accomplish your goals, okay? All right, now let's get into some advice. You know, you guys can ask anything, literally. That's what the crew is about. And you can email the crew book club at gmail.com or you can DM our Instagram at the crew book club. Okay, so this was actually, I had posted in the stories and someone had uh, put a question in the box. It said, when is it too soon to forgive? And I was like, well, that was very blanket and plain. (laughs) But because I don't know what you're trying to forgive. And it's so funny, like I typed in Google when to forgive and everything was about forgiving your spouse when there's infidelity. And I'm like, oh, wow. So I don't know if that's what you were asking for forgiveness for. But I'm gonna just give you a general synopsis. I feel like the sooner you forgive someone, the sooner you can heal and move forward. Forgiving someone is not necessarily about them all the time. Forgiving them doesn't mean that you just move on without having a conversation or setting boundaries or just moving forward without them in your life is fine too. And to understand, we don't always need closure when forgiving someone and they don't even need to be involved. Forgiving someone is about you. So take your pride, your pettiness, your revengefulness, leave, let God handle that emotion of it. But the sooner you can forgive, the sooner you can move forward. And it, I really love the response that was given on peacewithgod.net. And it was saying, how do we forgive others? There are many paths to forgiveness, but nearly all of them include at least these three steps. It says, one, recognize the importance Jesus put on for forgiveness. Okay, when he was teaching the disciples how to talk to God, he mentioned in his model prayer, forgive us our sins. We have forgiven those who sin against us Two, reject the devil. Let go of your anger. Don't give Satan a chance to use your bitterness and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry for anger gives a foothold to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4, 26 through 27. Yeah, I'm going to give you scripture, okay? Three, remember God has forgiven you. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians chapter three, verse 13. And I know you're probably like, girl, I want to hit that right now. I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm this, I'm that. And that's where you see how you're making it about you and how that turmoil is affecting you. That has nothing to do with the other person. So you can forgive immediately, lean into Christ so he can guide you like we talked about earlier and let him handle the person who hurt you, but forgive for you to be able to move forward. Okay. So that was what would the crew do? That's my recommendation on the question. When is too soon to forgive? You can forgive immediately because it's about you. All right. Now, you know, we can't end this episode without giving you the quote of the week. And I have two because I couldn't choose (laughs) the quote of the week. Two of them. The first one comes from page 167. Efficiency is doing the thing right. Effectiveness is doing the right thing. I'm big on effective and efficiency. Okay. Page 181, you can't put limits on what you'll do. You have to be open to new ideas and new ways of doing things if you want breakthroughs in your life. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're going to have to do new things. If you want to grow and elevate, you're going to have to do new things, okay? it's no way around it, okay? Next week, we'll be finishing this book, chapter 17, the fourth Thieves in chapter 18, the journey and putting a closing to putting the one thing to work. And this book was so good. I hope you guys tune in next week to finish this out. And remember, go out 
and be effective and efficient in your life so you can elevate. Thanks for hanging with the Crew Book Club podcast, and I will holler at you guys next week. Hey! Want to be a part of the crew? Hit that follow button so you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, I would appreciate you showing crew love by rating the show on iTunes and Spotify. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share and tell a friend so your whole crew can be growing with you. Let me be the first to tell you, welcome to the crew.